Hi guys, welcome back to Back to Basics, episode 18, where my fiance Michael is teaching me how to trade. We have a full playlist if you want to scroll back to episode number one, where we start with the basics. Well, we're still in the basics, but we start with what is the stock. Today it looks like it's going to be a test, so wish me luck. We finished the last of the technical patterns that I think are important for new traders to learn. So before we go into the next topic, which will be fundamental analysis, talking about news and what companies do and things like that, it's good to always refresh our brains and wrap up uh, a topic to make sure we have that concrete before we move on. And again, if you're watching this on Jess's channel, come check out mine. If you're watching it on mine, know that Jess has the next episode up. VIP access. So you can go over there and, and be an episode ahead. All right, so this is what in theory should be on the test. There's not, it's not this long. So there's some of these that aren't there, but just as a reminder of everything that we covered, give you a second to think about what those patterns are and, and what they look like and all of that. So again, the format of this will be I'll show you a chart. You'll tell me what you think the pattern is in it. We'll have you draw it and include the trigger, stop, and target that the pattern would kind of dictate. And then I'll show you how I did it. And then we'll we'll keep going from there. Again, I want to note to everyone, these are subjective. Someone sees something different. doesn't mean they're wrong. It's just, again, you heard that, folks. how you take a look at it. You, I, can, I can't get them wrong. Ah, you can get them wrong, but there's... You know, every pattern could be called different things, I guess. So what's this one? That is triangle. Okay. What kind of triangle? It is a symmetrical triangle. There you go. You're right. That's the easy part done. <laughs> so next is draw the pattern. Okay. Mark where you would enter, where your stop loss would be, and what the target would be for the pattern. And we've got a little drawing tool for you. <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Here we go. Okay. Is that wrong? <laughs> the lines in a triangle are generally straight, but because uh, it's a mouse, I'll forgive you there. So where would the entry be? Well, I know this is your profit target. This is what you're looking to make on the trade. Okay. Put that over here for now. Okay. So where are you entering this? I'm not really sure. So looking at this chart, what would you say the trend is? It's going down. Right. The trend is, you know, we started at 30 and now we're at 6. So that's a pretty, yeah, pretty good downward trend there. So we're just gonna put this down here. Okay. So we would probably get in at get in at the bottom here, and then your stop is where these guys are. Okay. It's a very loose description, but I guess we'll take it. So. Okay, I was right at the end. Pretty much. You want to include all of the price action since the price action changed, right? So the price action was pretty just straight down here. Since it changed, you want to include this point. So you see how you didn't include any right. of this data? Yeah. Right. So you want to include that data as well. And you didn't include any of this data. So you want to make sure you include that as well. Right. So again, the stop, the target is some people will say the length to get into the pattern. Again, traditionally speaking, it's the width of the pattern. You're going to enter the short because the trend it, of it is trend down. of it is down. And your stop can go again. Some people will say if it gets back into the pattern, some people will say at the top of the pattern, but that's generally how that would look. So I give you 75% on that one, okay. that question. Okay, so what's this one? And again, we're always just looking at oh, the change from when, when did the stock change? Like, you know, it was obviously doing something and then, right, because all these patterns, I guess it's important to note, are are pauses in trend. It's a pennant. Okay. Is that right? Oh, that's close, kind of. Close. You're good to draw. So again, draw the pattern. Uh, draw the, tell us where you would enter. Uh oh. Close enough. We get what you're going for. I see what you're doing here with the little flag now. Right? Yeah, I see. Okay, so. And then this thing here. Right. Okay, I get it. That's good. All right, just, you can just move the mouse to it, but where would you put, where would you enter? See, can I show you what I thought of why I was a pennant? Sure, I see. Yeah, and right, and that's why I'm saying that some of these could be interpreted a little differently. You're cutting okay. off a lot of price action doing that is my only critique okay. there. Okay. 
you want to include as much as possible. Again, it's open to debate whether you include the wicks or not. A lot of people do. I generally don't because you don't know how long the price action stayed there but again where would the entry be the entry would be like a 50. yep you could say that or break above 50 bucks would make sense and then your stop would be maybe one of these two here like one of those the what do you mean by one of those one of the red candles there this last red candle or the one just below it here that's on the line where would you put the stop because remember, a candle is a whole thing. You put it on the top of the candle, in the middle of the candle, by the close of the candle, by the... Okay, maybe the close of the candle. So then you're saying that your stop would go right here. Yeah. Okay. That is wrong. Again, it's, it's a bit subjective, but traditionally speaking, the stop is usually where the pattern is invalidated. Okay. Right? So think of price action maybe broke 50 by a couple bucks and then came down here and touched this and then came right. up again. Okay. Well, it's still technically in a, a flag, so it's not... So, But again, it, it's up to you. Some people will say, you know, if I take a break here and price comes back and closes inside the pattern, I'm going to get out again. And then if it breaks up again, I'll just get back in again. Whereas some people are saying, no, it's, it's here. I'm going to put the, the stop on it. And I'm just going to let it go. And then the question is, do you want to be more active or, or less active? I, mean, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer there. So then this is how I did it. All right, so trigger, same as you. Lines, pretty much the same as you. Target on this one, or the target on this one is the length of the flagpole, and your stop is out. So you can see the target's kind of way up so here. So is the target, or the, yeah, is the target always the length of the flagpole? On flags, yeah. Okay. Yeah. On triangles, it's how wide the triangle yeah. gets on flags and pennants. Because if you think about it, like triangles are really long patterns. Whereas what you're hoping to do on a flag is to have a stock. So something happened here on this stock where when it broke up over here, it, it, went really high. it surged really yeah. big. So what you're hoping is that, you know, the price, the buyers take a rest, the, the sellers come in, you know, the people who bought here sell to take profit, but people are using this pullback as a chance to buy more. Mm -hmm. So then when it explodes again, that it has roughly the same type of momentum that it did the first time. And again, we'll talk about these are, are very, very incredibly basic uh, risk management type plans. It's, it's not enough to be a profitable trader to have risk management plans like this. Uh, that will be a whole... That will be the last section before you go, and it'll probably be four or five lessons on just risk management because, you know, people are probably bored of me hearing it, but it is the secret to trading for sure. Next pattern, I'll give you full points for that one. How about that? Oh, even though I said it was a pennant, it was a flag? Crap, forgot about that. I'll still give you full points. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't think we're recording them anywhere. You can put up like a million percent... Uh, a double plus or something this one's gonna be a bit harder i think i'm not sure you should leave this blank stare and the <laughs> whole thing like i see a little rounded bottom here but i don't see anything really over here well, let me give you a hint the pattern starts look from here over well can i just say that's a little bit of cheating on your part because no, before you it's... told me we only look at the tail of the chart we do well what's going on here then you'll see it well you'll you'll see it when i show you for sure you'll agree with me that it makes sense probably the best way to word it i don't know okay i was looking for one so tell me tell me where it's at well are you going to forfeit drawing it in and everything Take the L on this one. I don't have a choice because I can't see it. Right, so we have a shoulder here because remember, a head and shoulders is the, oh goodness is me. the point at which the pattern changes, right? Like that, right? So you can see you had a pretty obvious downtrend here, right? And this is the point in which the downtrend changes. So that's your head and shoulders. So there's a shoulder here, and there's your head. That was a hard one. And there's your other, they're a hard pattern to spot. I spent about 20 minutes this morning finding this one, right? And then when it comes to head and shoulders, you draw a neckline, 
take a break of the neckline. So your target would be up here somewhere because it's the difference between the For head anyone and the at ne home watching neckline. This? If you were able to spot this pattern, comment below because I don't know if he's trying to throw it's, me for a loop. Why would I go through all this effort of marking all this up for you? <laughs> so you get a you get an L on that one. If you want to use the drawing tool to try to help you come up with a pattern, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, well I see this. Right? Even here. Even here. And then I see... What do I see here? Is this a wedge? That's right. Yes. Look, I'm learning. You are learning. Okay. So I'll just do this quickly because you've already done it to draw it in. But one thing I will note when you drew it, you cut off this. Okay. Why I wouldn't cut that off is because that's a closing price, right? It's not a little wick. The stock actually closed there because that candle is green. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's okay cutting off places where the stock didn't close. And it's okay doing that because it just dipped down here for a second and it just dipped down here for a second, right? But you see how I included all this because the stock actually closed right here on this line. And the stock actually closed up here, right? So I would move this kind of just a little bit more like that just to include that it actually closed there. Okay. It doesn't change the pattern. It's just a little more exact. So where would you enter? Where's your stop? Where's the target? So first, what direction are you trading this in? I'm not sure because half of the chart is going up and then it takes a big tumble and now it's climbing again right so, so are these patterns is a wedge a pause in a trend or is a wedge so when a when a flag you notice how in that last one the price was going up and the flag was turning down a bit mm -hmm. and then we were looking for it to continue mm -hmm. apply that to this so it's going down? Well, the trend is down, yes. But why? Well, because it's well, un remember, an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows, which you can see here. Right. And a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. So since we are well under where an uptrend was, we think of that trend as invalid. Okay. Right. It it's, doesn't matter if the stock, um, so look at a stock that goes bankrupt, say Blockbuster. Right. For a while there, Blockbuster did great. And now Blockbuster is worth zero. So is the final trend of Blockbuster up or down? Do we care that there was a period where Blockbuster went up? Okay, this is, it's just a little confusing to me because it's, again, it's all relative. It is. If you zoomed out a million years ago, the trend may look different. Or but zoomed what... in to like a month and the trend is up. It is, but it's up in this pattern, right? So I'm giving you an image. Don't think about all the other stuff. Just think about just this image. This stock currently is in a downtrend and will be in a downtrend until it breaks up here because it, you know, and it's not making higher highs and higher lows anymore, right? Now it's made a, a low and it's currently bouncing. If it gets all the way back up here, it's no longer in a downtrend and we'll look to, to take long positions on it. Okay. Or if it pulled back to here or something and then pushed higher again because then what it's done is it's taken a low and then now it has a higher low but right now it doesn't have any of that so back to the question i'm going to trade it down okay and the other way to note that is wedges are continuation patterns and continuation patterns you are always are going to move kind of slightly counter to what the trend going into the pattern is right so that's why you don't notice any of this is because what you're looking at is what is the trend that took us into the pattern right? okay. the trend that took us into this pattern is okay. down that's therefore we look for okay. okay that's probably a better way to explain it okay so where are you gonna enter like 12 this one here 1236 that's not a trigger though that's where that candle closed right okay so where would you put, so you have to type in a number to put out an order to short the stock. What's your number? 1235. <laughs> okay, so you're saying that if the stock opens up tomorrow inside the pattern still, just right right here. Okay, no, that it's like a short. 1237. Okay, so you want it to open up here in order to enter. 
you think that's the area that you're like, yep, yeah, I'm putting my risk down right here. No, like just outside the red line. Down here. So like 1230, 1230 then. Okay, so that'd Does that be make sense? right there. Okay. Okay. Is that not good? We'll find out. Where would you put your stop? Um, The highest, the green one here, so. So right here? No, no, no. The stop is, yeah. Up here. Yeah. Okay, that part is right, okay? So we got the same pattern why do you have the trigger so low because we want it when it breaks out of a pattern so it broke out of a pattern right here and then bounced back up okay so wouldn't it make sense to say we want it to and and again don't always think about this again it, all the whole purpose of this is to go back to that battle between the buyers and the sellers and mm -hmm. the psychology of the market participants that's all technical analysis is right the psychology of the participants so yesterday we saw this stock break down to about $12 and then what happened to it? It closed up. Right. Buyers came. So what pattern is that? A hammer. Right. Showing what does a hammer show us about this $12 area, say this 12.30 to $12 area. That there was someone there. Right. So to buy it. wouldn't it make sense to wait until below $12? Okay, yes. And say, I'm going yes. to enter there, right? Yes. I'm going to wait until there's evidence that the guy who bought yesterday is gone. Right. Right, right. The, the trigger would be there. Targets with the, mm -hmm. with the pattern. Stop. Again, there's the two methods. There's the one saying invalidate the pattern. The other saying is a close back inside the pattern. I'm going to get out. That's a, you know, do I want to trade actively? I usually do the second because I would rather get out because I'm an auto trader and the robot trades for me. I would rather get out and then say, I'll let the robot get me back in if it continues. It's maybe the last one. No, I think one more after this. You're going to get mad at this one too. Because it's not going to be a real one. No, they're all real ones. Yeah, but it's going to be a funny one. I don't know. If it's an inverted cup and handle, is it inverted? One, no, an inverted would be a top for yeah, a cup and handle. Yeah, that's what I was, okay. So remember these, the same with the uh, head and shoulders are counter trend patterns. So do you, you want to forfeit drawing it and see how I drew it? Oh, if you draw it way back over like March 2nd, I'm going to be upset. Right, so here you have your cup. How you know it's a cup is it's a big rounded bottom that comes right to where oh. it broke down from. Okay, it's not... And then it has a secondary move, and that move is both shorter in depth and generally shorter in length Okay. as the other one. So that's how you get your handle, right? So a cup and handle, again, the, the textbook pattern is something like this, right? And you can kind of see how you have a bit of the same look going on here. I thought it had to be attached to a flag. Not necessarily, but it kind of is, right? If you looked at this as the move up, and then this is the the move sideways, right? Okay. It's kind of a weak a weak flag, but okay. it's it's this pattern. The reason it's called a cup and handle is that just kind of looks like a cup with a handle. Right? And if you grab a cup with a handle, generally the base is lower mm -hmm. than the actual handle. And then profit targets is uh, well entry is obviously when the pattern breaks up. So when we clear the handle of the pattern here, your stop goes under here. Right, so your stop would be in this area, and then your profit target is from the top to the bottom of the cup, which is that just extended out. Okay. So what are you at now? Not very good. <laughs> I think you're passing. Oh, and that is it. Oh, good. So there you go. So you got let's call it a fifty-five percent. All right. So what's your what's your game plan to get better? I'm gonna start looking at more charts. Good. I have a setup for you on your iPad, in the web version. You can just go through them. It's always the best way to learn. And again, do them and then take the little Apple pencil and draw them out. And eventually, I don't know how long it takes because I've been doing this for so long, but eventually you'll just see them without having to draw them out. All right. So good. Good enough to go to the next topic. <laughs> do you think you're ready? I think. We'll sprinkle in some more reviews just to, to keep everything sharp. But... All right, that's it for this test. Uh, next one will be an intro to fundamental analysis, a fairly short one, and we'll start getting into that. After that, will be statistical analysis, and then it'll be risk management, trading plan development, and then 
you've graduated. You're off. All right? All right.